Effect of temperature change on the chemical equilibrium. According to the Lee Shetler's principle, if a system at the equilibrium is supposed to uh, any stress, the system will react in a way so that it can relieve that stress, you know, stress. Which means that a system, a chemical system in equilibrium, if we impose any kind of a change on it, the system will react in a way so that it can undo the change. So whatever we change we impose on a chemical equilibrium, it will try to undo that change. Now let's try to understand the effect of the change in temperature. Okay, if you change the temperature, so how the chemi you know, this, uh, chemical equilibrium will react. We know we have two types of reactions, endothermic reactions and the exothermic reactions. In an endothermic reaction, heat is being absorbed and you know the delta H will be the positive for that reaction. Which means, you know, if we have a reaction here, the reactants are being converted into the product, the reactants change into the product, and if it is an endothermic reaction, then we can say heat is actually being absorbed by the reactants, and after the reactants absorb heat, they form the product. So I can say it's like this, heat is being absorbed by the reactants, and they form the product. Now, if we have an exothermic reaction, an exothermic reaction is the one where heat is given out. So for that reaction, delta H will be negative. Which means that, you know, if you, you have a reactant and it converts into the product and if the reaction is exothermic, that means heat is being, you know, given out by the reaction. So I can write down the heat in the product side. Now, looking at the change of temperature. Now, when you change the temperature, as per the Lee Shackley's principle, the equilibrium is going to react in a way so that it can undo the change. Now the question is how this is possible, right? The change in temperature of a reaction at the equilibrium will actually cause the reaction to, you know, shift in a direction that will undo the change of temperature. So it means if you increase the temperature, the react, you know, this chemical equilibrium will try to decrease that temperature. And if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium will react to try to trying to increase that temperature. Let's take one example over here. See, this is the reversible system. The nitrogen gas reacts with the hydrogen and forms with ammonia. The delta H for the reaction is negative, which means that this is an exothermic reaction, right? Delta H negative means this is exothermic. So when reactants combine, nitrogen, hydrogen, the, you know, it combines and then uh, ammonia is being formed and therefore some heat is also being given out. Now the question is, when you increase it in your temperature, what effect will an increase in temperature have on the reaction, you know, on this reaction? Increase in temperature means that the equilibrium will try to absorb that, correct? It will try to absorb that heat, decrease that temperature. So when you increase the temperature, basically the in this, you know, particular system here, it is the backward reaction that will be, uh, you know, favored. In the forward direction, because you know, see, in the forward direction, when nitrogen and hydrogen combines, it forms the ammonia, and also heat is being released. Now, in the backward direction over here, if ammonia decomposes back to the, you know, this one, nitrogen and hydrogen. Now, in this process, ammonia actually absorbs heat and forms nitrogen and hydrogen. In the forward direction, what do you see? We see that nitrogen reacts with the hydrogen, forms ammonia, and gives out heat. So when you increase temperature, it will react in a way so that it can decrease the temperature. Means it will try to equilibrium will try to utilize that excess temperature, that you know increase in temperature, and that's possible only when the backward reaction will be favored. You know that means the equilibrium will shift in the backward direction. Correct. And now what will happen if we decrease temperature? Right. If you decrease the temperature then in that case, equilibrium will move in the forward direction because here the heat is being given out. When you decrease the temperature, this you know, equilibrium will react in a way so that it can increase the temperature, means it will try to you know, give more and more heat. And that is possible only when you know, the nitrogen and hydrogen combine and forms ammonia and gives out the heat also. So it means that Decrease in temperature will shift this particular system in the product side, while as increase in temperature will shift this reaction in the reactant side, in the backward direction. 
You can also remember it like this, you know, for example, for this particular system, we have the forward reaction, which is an exothermic here, and the backward reaction is endothermic, right? Backward reaction is endothermic. So when you increase temperature, it is the endothermic step that will be favored. So increasing in temperature always favors the endothermic step. You know, a step while heat is being absorbed. And, uh, you know, this exothermic step will be favored when you decrease the temperature. Decrease in temperature favors the exothermic step. Let's take one more example. In this particular reaction, you see the SO3 decomposes to the SO2 and O2 and the delta H for the reaction is positive. That means this is an endothermic step. You know, this is an endothermic reaction. So which means that you can say if, you know, SO3 absorbs some heat and it then converts into the SO2 and O2. And what will be the backward reaction? You know, when SO2 reacts with the oxygen, that gives SO3 and heat. And that means the forward reaction here in this case is endothermic and the backward reaction here is exothermic. The forward is endothermic step, the backward is exothermic step. Now increasing in temperature. We learned that increasing in temperature always favors the endothermic step, right? Increasing in temperature always favors the endothermic step because you know when you increase the temperature, the equilibrium will try to utilize that high temperature. It will try to absorb that heat. And that's only possible when, you know, you see the forward reaction is favored. Forward reaction occurs more. Means this heat, this increasing in temperature, that will be being, that will be absorbed by the SO3 and converts into the SO2 and O2. That means now, increasing in temperature will shift the, you know, this reversible system in the product side, you know, towards the product side. More of the SO2 and O2 will be formed there. And let's take one more example. We have NO plus O2, which forms the NO2, and the reaction here is exothermic because delta H is negative. That means when NO uh, reacts with the O2 and forms NO2, some heat is also released. So we can say here in this case, the forward reaction is exothermic step because when NO reacts with O2, it forms NO2 and heat correct some energy is released so forward reaction is exothermic in the backward direction look at here NO2 when it absorbs heat it decomposes to NO and O2 so that means the backward reaction here is endothermic step right now again we learned increasing in temperature favors the endothermic step right so that means endothermic step is being favored when you increase the temperature means when you increase temperature the backward reaction will occur faster which means more of the NO2 will decompose into NO and O2. So high temperature will shift this equilibrium in the reactant side and the low temperature will shift the this particular equilibrium into the product side. Hope you got it. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.